talking about the youth, when I went home uh, earlier this year, mm -hmm. I was so much uh, touched. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if touched in a bad way, I guess. But I was so much, let me say, embarrassed yeah, by what yeah, I yeah. saw. Yeah. Very young people. Mm. At the age of 22, I was already working as a cop. Yes. But I saw people who are 22, 20, 19, 25, 30. Yeah. Wasted. Yes. They were drinking this, they, they call it star bread. Yeah, in Django. Yeah, they dilute it with water, they yeah. can't afford <coughs> any drink to, mm. to use as dilution. And these are young people who you can tell that there is no more future here. The next thing that's coming here is that one will kill the other or they're going to die of depression or they will contract some illness and die. Mm. So how prevalent is this alcohol abuse in your heart? Uh That is a national problem. So my word, my word is not excluded. Yeah. We are having that issue and uh, it's, it's unfortunately that when we try to look at because you know like now i know you yeah if i see you in the next five years behaving otherwise yeah before i blame you i need to find out yeah that's true maybe i'll discover that you have divorced <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. you have lost your company yeah or something has happened that's what makes you to behave that way now the youth of zimbabwe when we see them behaving the way that they are behaving it is because of the way how our government is running the affairs of the country yeah uh, i promise you you can't rely on saying we fought for the land and the youth we are giving you land yeah. but you don't give the skills and when you wherever you support the youth you support based on party affiliations now you, this is a problem that has been created by our politicians, yeah. especially ZANU PF, so that the youth will be wasted. And when they are wasted, that's why you see in a normal country, Mko, yeah. you will never see a political party campaigning with a full truck full of uh, two pieces of chicken and yeah, a cold drink. Yeah. You will never see that in a normal country. That's true. But you see it in Zimbabwe because of what? Because they know that the men on the ground he cares less about the job yeah. he cares less about a good road he cares less all what he cares about is his stomach yeah. Yeah. and who created the problem of stomach it's zanu pf again no jobs no employment nothing then they come again and because in a normal country ask yourself chamisa has been voted and won the elections because we should also say that he has won the elections I know maybe <laughs> we, 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 it's another discussion for another day. Yeah. But Chamisa has been voted. And I, I travel uh, a lot going to Chamisa's uh, 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 rallies, yeah. or should I say. I, I, I don't use the party money. I use my money. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll find that a day sometimes, like I was in Gwanda last week, I used close to 600 rand for mm -hmm. me to go there and come back food and all that. Yeah. Why do I do that? It is because of his blueprint and also his, the, the energy that he produces. I mean, how would a politician come with a, full of, uh, a truck full of uh, chicken and say, yeah, vote for me, and then after the rally you are given a chicken and you are being undermined. You are being uh, reduced to nothing. And uh, the truth is, let's respect people. Let's show people that we are there because we want to save them and we want to become a better society. Yeah, yeah. And my biggest fear in that is that um, I'm talking here about some body who is now 25 years and yeah. never worked, he yes. wakes up in the morning, mm. maybe he helps someone who's just alighted from a bus, yes, yes, yes. carry their stuff, yeah. home, they give them 50 rand, they cope, they drink all that money. Yeah. You're talking about somebody who will never have a family. You're talking about somebody who will never own anything. Yeah. And so now what we are creating is a culture where we have 30 years from now, people our age ah. who are wasted, no. who cannot be considered to be a Correct. And these people will be deciding the country's future. Because yes. They expected to vote, as you are saying already, based on 
the pieces of chicken that they got for free. Yeah. And these people are creating the next generation of Zimbabweans. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we need to have a solution to this. And what is your solution okay. starting at what level? I, I am glad we speak about the problem and not just leave it hanging. Yeah. But we also uh, try to dissect on what could, what can we do. Yeah. Number one, as I told you, that the toxism of our politics, we need to get rid of it. Yeah. At village level, at what level, at district level and national, we need to all work towards that goal of getting this toxicism out of the way. Yeah. Whether you are triple C, Zapu, Zanu, let's work out that. Number two, uh, obvious, this is a problem that is affecting our youth psychologically. Yeah. Uh, the plan that I have is to, I, I, I'm still writing uh, uh, something on that. Yeah. I'm still doing a write-up on that because I need to go offices. You yes. see today I'm talking with you, I'm in South Africa. Yes. I'm from a meeting where I was, I was meeting um, uh, partners that I'm bringing my bow to them. I'm not going to just ask for money all the time. Yes. No, I will also ask for services yes. from people whereby these people they need counseling yeah. yeah we need to cancel these young people and we also need to empower them yeah and we yeah. also need to develop their vocational skills because you might find that this young man is 22 he's i have one like that yeah he, very intelligent young man but he has been wasted to alcohol right i've got a generator at home yeah. and i say and i say to him he said to me you know what Mdala, mina i know how to weld I said, where did you learn? He said, I was staying with my father in Gwanda, so I know how to weld. Then I said, okay, take this generator. You will be doing your welding and all that. The other day he told me, he said, ah, you know what? I, it, somebody said he wants to make a scotch card. Yeah. And I charged him 6000 I said, do it. Yeah. So you see that these people, they are willing. Yeah. They have the will. But there is no support system. If it's there, it has to be partisan. Whereby a... Support a and yeah. then if you are not a ZANU PF member, sorry, go wasted. So, my program on that to be precisely and answer your, your question one, I'm looking for counseling, mm -hmm. that one is a fact, we cannot yeah. avoid it. One will say, Where are you going to get it? We've got people that have started organizations, yeah. they are all over Zimbabwe, they want to do counseling and they want to give such services. Yeah. Let's not put red tapes in the words. Because you know what? Most of the words, they don't have development uh, as they should. It's because of the councillors. Councillors, sometimes they get, they want to consolidate their positions and power. Therefore, policy, even if he has, remember, let's say when uh, somebody in my ward brings you yeah. and say, councillor, already I've had situations like that. Yeah. Councillor, I've got my uncle. He is in UK. Yeah. And he says he can pay um, a social worker. To help us with uh, a teenage pregnancy then i think oh he's now this one is bringing his uncle 2028 yeah. the uncle might challenge yeah. me yeah. then i put the red tapes i start dilly dally we don't have to do that yeah you we must be open to those partners that are coming within our words yeah. so that's what i've opened i'm opening that channel of people that comes with those experts to come and help us so counseling is very important develop vocational skills yeah. because not everybody is academically given yeah. some they want to do welding they want to do building remember those days when zimbabwe had a uh, yeah 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 today some of the people that are building south africa the best constructors yeah. uh, in south africa they they they, they were trained in Echewin yes. in zimbabwe so these are the things that we should and you don't need a lot you can just open a ground yeah. get the bricks, buy some trowels and all that, get a proper builder to come and train these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Believe me, when they have something to do already, yes, um, I, will, I have to mention that, I've already written to another bus uh, company because I'm asking for sports uh, wear. Okay. Because we want to use sports yeah. to take away uh, our children from these things, from the age of... Uh, 11 up uh, from the age of nine up until 25 both uh girls and boys 
because there is this tendency of uh, starting uh, soccer clubs for boys yeah. and we don't leave the we don't do it with the girls you find that those boys after they've played they now go and uh, waste the girls yeah. so we need to empower everybody so that whenever they engage in these things that are uh, they should really be conscious yeah, yeah they shouldn't be pushed by peer pressure and boredom but right now they're pushed by boredom keep them busy you've already highlighted a problem of which we all know about of alcohol abuse mm -hmm. you've spoken about uh, counseling sessions mm -hmm. and that already speaks to the inclusion of ngos yes in whatever plans you have yes but also there is a law hanging fruit in terms of providing counseling we have our conventional churches. Unfortunately, uh, under Zanu PF, let me state this, they have corrupted the church, especially these happy happy churches, mm, mm, where you mm. find motivational speakers <laughs> claiming that they are, they are pastors, pastors and, and prophets. They are doing it for the money, they are promising yeah. people easy money, which doesn't exist. Mm. But we have conventional churches that we grew up under. Yes. Mm -hmm. In Matopo, I know of, there is the SDA, the Roman Catholic, CSA. Roman Catholic <coughs> BICC. Yes. Mm. So what role do you have? And I will tie this with the NGOs. What role do you have for this? Because they are complaining that number one, they are instrumental. Churches and NGOs are very instrumental mm. in bring in peace, mm. uh, especially where there has been political violence before. And cancelling people mm. who are in different situations. Mm. So what role do you have for them, both of them? churches and NGOs in trying to make your world wicked. Ah. You, 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 you see, sometimes being an experienced journalist, it helps because you, you can even become like prophetic. What happens is that um, on the 26th of this, uh, of this month, yes. uh, we are having our first of uh, its kind okay. in, in what for, whereby all churches, all denominations, are going to converge in one place okay. for a church service okay. and this is a church service that does not choose um you remember people associate you find that uh, there is this church it has got a branch here and a branch there so whenever they want to come together they they go as a certain denomination yes. but on the 26th we're coming together as the people of what for okay right this is in line with the, the, the manifesto of Triple C. If you check, the first thing that uh, our manifesto speaks of yeah. is to recognize and acknowledge the churches. Yeah. Remember, a human being is in three forms. Yeah. A human being has got a soul, has got a spirit, and is, is physical. Yes. Now, politicians normally don't care about your yeah, spiritual being. They don't care. That's why if they, they can't, they wouldn't really raise a Bible. When, when we are sown in, we raise hands and Bible and all that. Yeah. And immediately when we leave, we do contrary to what is written in that yeah, Bible. That's true. That's true. Now, one would say to me, why do you believe that uh, putting people together? Human beings, when you separate them spiritually, you have caused chaos. Because they will start seeing things different spiritually. Yeah. Now bring them together. Because even if when I you are a Roman Catholic, I'm a I'm a STA, there's a BICC guy, there's a whatsoever, and these other uh, 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 sharp shoe uh, boys yes. there. What is happening is that we are all worshiping the same God. Yes. yes. The doctrine is something that has been designed by somebody for his yeah, own yeah, benefit true, true. it has nothing to do with god yeah i mean that is where i'm coming from uh, so on the 26th we're coming together and in that service we are going to be also speaking about the challenges we are facing okay. this is going to be a norm for the next five years whether we are going to do it once a month or we are going to do it once every three months or once every one year um, and make it big, maybe uh, do it, if we do it once a year, we do it for over the weekend. Mm -hmm. We are going to do that. And I believe in us doing that, it will bring us together. It will make us realize that we are of one God. 
Yeah. But we are being divided by the doctrine that has been created by people. Yeah. Because yeah. if I ask you, what is the difference between the God of Romans and the God of uh, 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 Seventh-day Adventists? What's the difference? It's just one thing. It's just one thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's why sometimes the scholars will come back and say, there is no God. Yeah. Because uh, the way how we people that claim to follow God, we conduct ourselves. Yes. Then they will tell you, the atheist will come and tell you that uh, there is no God. You are God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As yeah. we draw to a close, yes, uh, it was a two-pronged uh, question. Yes. Now, the role of NGOs, because oh, okay. most of these NGOs are being led by people who are just out there to make the money. Yeah. They write reports, very beautiful reports afterwards, yeah. claiming that they have done certain things yeah. without having done anything. They are okay. not working for the people, they are not working within communities. Yeah. So, is there a way that you want to first tie them in, into your plans, but of course they do have their own. Yeah. And also making sure that they don't lie about the word. Mm. claiming that we have done this without having done it. Okay, without a uh, 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 fear, let me mention uh, organizations like Pro-Africa, um, World Vision. Yeah. Um, these are the organizations that are doing tremendous good job um, as, 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 as NGOs. Yeah. And we appreciate that. They've drilled balls, they've they are doing um, uh, uh, economical uh, 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 generating programs yeah. um, within the world. Now, I think every NGO that comes to the world yeah. should definitely do a presentation and see if really it's in line with our development of brands. Yes, yes. You cannot just come in uh, just because you want to fulfill your mandate. <laughs> We give you the ground to abuse us yeah, and fulfill true. your mandate of uh, filling in the forms. All what you need is the signatures, yeah. and you we will quantify your work. Yeah, I'm not going to be a counselor that says, "Yeah, you said you want uh, 50 girls that you want to train," yeah. and within 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 the process of your training, I will quantify your your work. I will check the quality of the work that you bring, okay. the end product. And if you are not really uh, worth keeping, why keep you? Yeah. Then you have to go. They, we, we cannot really allow people to advance their, 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 their wants and wishes at our expense, yeah, at the true. poor communities. So as a counselor, I need to be awake and make sure that whoever comes in, in the, in the name of they want to help, they really help yeah. and they give us something of substance. You cannot just come and uh, give us forms and say, no, girls, fill your names, your IDs, and your signatures, and then next week again, and then you go and claim 10,000 US dollars, while at least you did not even uh, do a job that is worth 50 US dollars. Yeah. No, it cannot happen. When you come, we must really check your track record also. Yeah. Yeah. If you are an organization that is new, yeah, well, we, can, we will give you a chance. But all we want is quality. Yeah. If you don't have quality work and you know that you're minded, and we are going to to to, to it, we are not uh, we are not like uh, uh, dunderheads, whereby you will come and fool us with your 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 your, your colored uh, your colored uh, papers and all that, and then we think uh, policy is a deal. Yeah. No, we will we will we will check your track record, even if it's not the track record of. The organization yeah. we will check the track record of policy behind the person behind yeah. the organization what have you done when as a person wherever you come from yeah. either for yourselves have you built anything have you done anything you can't come and teach us about financial uh, management while at least yeah. you don't even have a bank account yeah. no we will be lying to ourselves so those are the things that i'm there as a steward of the people given the mandate by the people to make sure that what comes into the world is of quality good intention if it's a if it's a, an agreement it must be an agreement that does not abuse yeah. or suppress or oppress anyone okay and you've played some you've placed some emphasis on the youth and your plans for the youth yeah but now what plans do you have for the elder because they also constitute uh, members of your constituents look they they when you when you've got the youth up yeah. and running and have them sustainable economically yes Believe me, the elderly are taken care of. Okay. 
because there is no one who, who's elder, who's old, without somebody who's young within their homestead. Yeah. But with that being said, the elderly people, I'm surprised that in Zimbabwe um, we do not have a, a, a proper strong social services. Because if we had that, like countries like South Africa, you've got people, elderly people that are given free, free uh, uh, money. Because yeah, yeah. Not, not even pension fund. They call it social grant. Yes. They're given that. Um, one of the guys that was doing mining before these uh, ZANU PF people chased him away. Yeah. Uh, do you know what he was doing? And he's a local guy. Okay. He was giving uh, every elderly person 50 US dollars. Okay. Yeah. He will go and sell his gold at Fidelity in Mapisa because we have Fidelity there. Yeah. Then he will come back from whatsoever, you will take maybe 500 US dollars and you will give to the elderly. Right. That is not, that is good, but it's not something that I can encourage. Yeah. We would rather have a system whereby we say to the elderly people, um, we will bring a doctor for you. Yeah. Uh, or we will go and buy food for you. Then we come, we, we give them. Yeah. So the elderly people is our responsibility. We have to look after them. We have to be very, very, very careful about their social welfare. Yeah. And once the young people within the world, majority of the young people who are languishing in poverty, yeah. are sustained and given skills that will sustain them, we will automatically have taken care of our elderly people. Then those that do not have anybody that will support them. I, as a counselor, together with my uh, village development committees, we have to make sure that we get um that's where also other organizations with their goodwill yeah. come in allow them to come in and look after that